Hello? 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 My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we will have our lesson number 7 in the series of 15 on the topic of absolute value inequalities. Absolute value inequalities, the seventh video in the series of 15 and today happens to be our lesson number 122. The problem for today is already on the blackboard. Here is what we are told. We are told that the absolute value of p minus 3 has to be less than or equal to 4. Has to be less than or equal to 4. Before we worry about less than or equal to part, let's first worry about just the equal to part. Okay, let's find out where is p minus 3 going to be equal to 4. Well, that's pretty straightforward, simple scenario. Here is our number line, here is 0, here is positive 4, and here is negative 4. Absolute value of this quantity is going to be equal to 0, e equal to 4. Absolute value of this quantity, p minus 3, is going to be equal to 4 when either p minus 3 is equal to negative 4, because the absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4, or when this quantity p minus 3 is equal to positive 4 because the absolute value of positive 4 is 4. It's one or the other. We just solve for it. We just solve for it. p minus 3 has to be either positive 4 or negative 4. In both cases, the absolute value of this quantity is equal to 4. Add 3 to both sides. is going to drop out and p would have to equal negative 4 and a positive 3 which is negative 1. And here 3 is going to drop out and p is equal to positive 7. That's it. Those are the, those are the two values. p is either negative 1 and a positive 7. Now what we will see next as we start dealing with the inequality part, we will see next, what we will see next is that these two values that we see here are going to play a crucial role. These are the values that we're going to work around. We're going to divide, we're going to take our number line and we're going to chop it up into three segments. One segment is going to go from negative infinity to negative 1. The second segment is going to go from negative 1 to positive 7. And the third segment has, is going to go from positive 7 to inf positive infinity. And we will have to decide where the allowable values of x, where, where the allowable values of p lie. Let's do that part now. What are we told? Ne? Less than or equal to? Uh, less than or greater than? We are told it has to be less than or equal to. Just give me one second here. Yep, less than or equal to 4. So let's do that part now. It has to be less than or equal to 4. Same exact scenario here is our 0, here is our positive 4, and here is our negative 4. Where is the absolute value of p minus 3 going to be less than 4? On this side, this side, positive side is very simple. The value of p minus 3 is going to be less than, less than or equal to 4 when p minus 3 happens to be between 0 and 4. Here is, here is the 4 part, here is the 4, including 4 or not including 4? The answer is including 4 because it is less than or equal to. So since it's including, we just have a closed circle. Had it been not including, we would have put an open circle. That's the positive territory. And where else is going to be p minus, absolute value of p minus 3 going to be less than or equal to 4? The answer is if the, absolute, if, the, if the value of p minus 3 happens to be between negative 4 and a 0. Negative 4 and a 0. That's it. For example, for example, if p minus 3 happens to be equal to negative 2, then the absolute value of p minus 3 is going to be the absolute value of 2, which is 2, which is less than 4. Absolute value of p minus 3, or rather, the value of p minus 3, p minus 3, cannot be equal to, cannot lie to the left of negative 4. For example, it cannot be equal to negative 5. Why? Because the absolute value of p minus 3 is absolute value of positive neg negative 5, which is going to be positive 5, and positive 5 is not less than 4. We are told it has to be less than or equal to 4. 5 is not less than or equal to 4. So it cannot lie in this region, it has to lie between negative 4, and a positive 4. It has to lie between negative 4 and positive 4. But we are not done yet. 
We're not done yet because this only this what we have done so far is just the intermediate step. It's not the final step. What we are what we are showing in the number line are the allowable values, allowable values of the quantity that we see in the, in the absolute sign, which is p plus p, p minus three. P minus three. We are not interested in locating the allowable values of this quantity. We have to show on the number line what are the allowable values of the p itself. For that, we have to do further analysis. So we know now, in order for absolute value of p minus three to be less than or equal to four, p minus three would have to be either greater than negative four, from negative four to zero, or p minus p minus three would have to be less than positive four, from zero to four. It has to lie either in this region. P minus three would have to be less than or equal to less than or equal to four. It has to lie in this region, or P minus three has to be more than negative four. More than negative four is right here. More than negative four, up to negative four, all the way up to zero. Let's solve for P. Add three to both sides. Add three to both sides. It's same as before. Nothing is different. It's same as before. This part work that we're doing is the exact same thing as solving the equality. It's not different. Negative three cancel is going to is going to get killed by the positive three, and it tells us that p would have to be more than or equal to negative one, or p would have to be three is going to cancel out less than or equal to seven. And if you put it back in, it will make perfect sense because if p is less than or equal to seven, then then Let's say, let's say if p is equal to seven, seven minus three is four, absolute value of four is equal to four. If p happens to be anything less than seven. So here's the number line, this is where we're going to show our thing here. Here's our zero, here's our negative one, and here is our positive seven. P has to be less than or equal to seven. So this is this region from zero, zero to seven part, all the way here, and it's a closed circle. Or it has to be greater than or equal to negative one. It has to be greater than or equal to negative one. Again, closed circle. This is where the p has to lie. P cannot be negative two. P cannot be negative two because if p is negative two, what happens here? What happens if p happens to be negative two? Negative two and a negative three. Absolute value of p minus three is going to be absolute value of negative five, which is five, and five is not less than four. P cannot be negative two. P cannot be on this side. P has to be between negative one and zero, and all the way up to seven. P cannot be nine. P cannot be nine because if P happens to be nine, nine minus three is absolute value of six, which is six, and six is not less than four. P cannot be nine. So that's it. That's your solution. This was the intermediate step. This is the final step. This is where we show where A, where, where P lies. P lies between negative one and a positive seven. P lies between negative one and positive seven, inclusive, including this area, including these two points, including these two points because we have an equal to sign. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.